Good morning. We welcome you to God's house and we pray the Lord's blessings on our worship service this morning. Today we are following the weekend of the fourth Sunday of Easter, also sometimes known as Good Shepherd Sunday, with divine service setting for without Holy Communion. And so we invite the congregation to join us in our opening hymn, hymn number 692, Praise to You and Adoration. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For 
the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Glory, Glory be to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep.
But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he then reviled in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the lesson for meditation this morning is the gospel lesson read a moment ago from John chapter 10. And our sermon theme today is entitled, The Life of a Sheep. Dear friends and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. So historically, today being the fourth Sunday of Easter, also is unofficially known sometimes as Good Shepherd Sunday. And it's a day that we enjoy because we love to hear about Jesus as our caring, loving Good Shepherd. But what we might not think about is that if Jesus is the Good Shepherd, then that means that we are sheep. And that's not exactly a compliment. When you think about the animal kingdom, there's some animals that just invoke images of power and fear. You've heard the phrases, as strong as an ox, graceful as a swan. Quick as a cat, ferocious as a lion. But what about sheep? Well, when you hear something about sheep, it's usually something along the lines of as dumb or as helpless as a sheep. Sheep aren't very smart animals. They don't intimidate anyone. Sheep don't cause fear. Nobody is afraid of a sheep. When you look at football teams, you have teams that have names of ferocious, intimidating, predatory animals, the bears, the lions, the panthers, the falcons. I've never heard of a football team called the sheep. Because of their low intellect and high degree of utter helplessness, the life of the sheep can be difficult and dangerous. They have to be constantly watched constantly led, they easily wander off. That makes them easy prey for predatory animals. A sheep cannot function one single day without an awful lot of help. Sheep are extremely dependent upon their shepherd. But for the sheep of the good shepherd, life is good. Under the care of the good shepherd, Jesus, we are cared for and we are provided for. Under Jesus, we are protected. Under Jesus, we are given life to the fullest, not only now, but eternally. So God's word of love for you today is that though we by nature are helpless sheep, we are under the eternal love and care of the Good Shepherd, and that's Jesus. Like we said, it can be rough being a sheep. Sheep face physical dangers on a daily basis. Because of their lack of intellect, they're easy prey, they're easily led astray, they're under constant attack. Thieves and robbers are always trying to get to the sheep. Listen again to what Jesus said in verse 1. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. Thieves and robbers are masters of deception, so they don't just simply use the gate. They try to sneak their way into the sheep pen by some other means because they have bad intentions. But then you have verse 5. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. So the one good thing that a sheep has going for it is that they're really good at recognizing the voice of the shepherd. They know that they can trust the shepherd, and they know that they can follow his voice, but they will flee from the voice of the stranger. The stranger might intend to harm the sheep, so his voice they will follow. So all of this is what makes comparing us to sheep actually a really good comparison. Because when you compare us to God, we're really not very smart. 
By nature, we are of original sin. That means that we're very easily led astray, very easily away from God. And when the ultimate enemy, that would be Satan, would attack, we're really horrible at standing up to him and defending ourselves. And we, as Christian sheep, face spiritual dangers all around us every single day. There's the idea that all roads lead to heaven. It's not just about Jesus, so you don't have to have Jesus at the center of everything. Those voices will tell us that we're actually good enough to go to heaven. We deserve to go to heaven. And nobody better tell us otherwise. So we really don't need a Savior. Others will say, well, if you'll just do A, B, and C, then we can earn God's love that way. So really it's all up to us. We should just simply try harder. They will tell you that you need not be dependent on Jesus. There are many voices that will try to lead us astray through false teachings, and those voices originate with the devil, the world, and the sinful nature. These voices constantly attack us, and they're trying to destroy us not only of body, but of soul. Those voices try to tell us that spiritually everything is okay just as it is. They will try to turn our faith and trust towards anything else other than Jesus and the promise given at his cross in the empty tomb. Ultimately, those voices are trying to pull us away from the security of God's sheep pen, otherwise known as the Christian church. And they're trying to separate us from the green pastures of God's means of grace. And we are totally and completely helpless, as helpless as a sheep, to defend ourselves against these attacks. Now, thankfully, God sends us shepherds to care and protect for his sheep. It's very helpful to see ourselves as sheep and to see that sheep pen as the church and to notice that there is a shepherd who is tasked with taking care of the sheep. The shepherd that God sends to serve under the good shepherd is the pastor. He has been charged by Christ, the good shepherd, to care for and protect the sheep. And the sheep are cared for and protected by him pointing the sheep to Jesus. Unlike the robbers, he enters the sheepfold through legitimate means, through the door. And by leading the sheep to Jesus through the means of grace, of word, and sacrament, the sheep then receive the care and the protection of the good shepherd. So the work of the shepherd is to lead the sheep to the good shepherd. And the work of the good shepherd is so much more than that. Listen again to what Jesus said in verse 7. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus is the door. Jesus and Jesus alone is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus alone is the way to the Father and the way to heaven. And he said that he knows his sheep intimately. Jesus knows you intimately. Jesus knows you by name. Jesus feeds you. He causes you to lie down in green pastures by feeding you with word and sacrament. Jesus gives you life because he gives you the forgiveness of all your sins. Jesus knows that you never could have cured yourself of your sinfulness, so he does it for you. Jesus became sin and death for you. Jesus became a sheep for you. Jesus is the Lamb of God who was slain to take away the sins of the world. Jesus laid down his very life for you, his sheep. Jesus is indeed the great shepherd of the sheep. He is Christ Jesus. He is your Lord and your Savior. And 
so now as a result of all of this, you now have life. And you not only have the certain promise of eternal life in heaven to come one day, but you experience life to the fullest with him as your leader and protector, even here and now. Christ's sheep have certain traits that identify you to be his own. Your baptism gave you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit allows you to hear Jesus, to know Jesus' voice when you hear it. So now you listen to the voice of your Satan shepherd. You know his word, you know his voice, so you follow him. And that means also that you know false teaching when you hear it, and you turn away from it, you do not follow the voice of the stranger, and that protects you from spiritual harm. So now you listen to the Good Shepherd and he speaks to you through his word. You love his law, you repent when you don't keep it, and you rejoice over his gospel of forgiveness. You yearn to hear his word, you can't wait to hear his word. You want to hear him in sermons in church. You want to hear him in Bible studies done in the church. You want to hear him in your own personal emotions as you do in your home. And you distinguish his truth and you identify true teachers from the false and misleading ones because the true teachers teach according to his word. You follow the lead of the under shepherd to the green pastures of word and sacrament to the altar where you receive your good shepherd in the most intimate ways. When he gives you his very body and blood in with and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of of all of your sins. So I guess being a sheep really ain't so bad after all. Well, that is because of the good shepherd. Though you are powerless against your sin and you're helpless in defending yourself against Satan, you have been brought into the sheepfold of the good shepherd. That is Jesus. And in Jesus, you have his loving guidance throughout all of the trials and the hardships and the problems that you have in life. Our world right now has the leadership of the Good Shepherd during this terrible pandemic. And not only that, you have his promises of forgiveness and eternal life in heaven because he died and he rose for you. So you live the life of a sheep, which is a life given, blessed, and guided by Jesus. Jesus is your ever-loving good shepherd. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until his second coming. Amen. We continue with the singing of our, singing of our prayer hymn number 770. What a friend we have in Jesus.
ongoing support we have had many people continue to support us not only through your prayers and by viewing our services and bible studies and uh, commenting on them but you also have supported us monetarily which is very greatly needed especially in this difficult time for our ministry and so once again we ask you uh, member and non-member alike to please prayerfully consider uh, donating to our ministry here at trinity lutheran church and school your donation will be fully tax deductible and you can donate in one of two ways it's very simple to donate online you can go to our website, trinitylombard.org, and it will be a, a one click to take you to our portal that will allow uh, an online donation electronically. Or if you prefer, you can mail us your uh, offering, and that mailing address is Trinity Lutheran Church and School, 1165 South Westmore Myers Road in Lombard, Illinois, 60148. We do thank you for your ongoing support. We thank you for your uh, support in the past. And we do ask you to prayerfully consider uh, continuing to support us financially in the future in these difficult times. <laughs> Holy Shepherd, 
You have clothed us with Christ's righteousness and taught us to love all that is good, right, and true. Bless all artists and artisans, composers and musicians, craftsmen and writers, that they may employ all their skills for your glory and in service to the gospel, and that the arts may testify to your saving death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Shepherd, your wounds are our healing, and your voice calls us to you in times of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind, who grieve those whom they love, and to whom death draws near. We pray especially this day for Marge Peterson, Dorothy Beasel, Jeanette Smock, Don and Linda Robertson, Barbara Wagner, Haven Bailey, Arnie Schumacher, Norm and Arlene Iverson, Ray Ely. Nathan LeChucky, Ron Nordman, Bob Garrett, Marjorie Klein, Ken Crozy, Ralph Meinfeld, Scott Nortz, Mark Freres, Judy Cachetto, Jean Wagner, Marjorie Wagner, Robert D. Young, and those who we name in the privacy of our own thoughts at this time. Grant them healing according to your will, and grant them grace to sustain them in their day of trouble and hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Be with the distraught, the unemployed, and return them to livelihood and to health. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Shepherd, you seek out those who have fallen, and you restore the sinner to repentance. Send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth, or those who have been overcome by temptation and sin. Bring good from ill, and increase in all the hunger for your word and a recognition of our need, that many may be gathered into your flock when church doors are opened again. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And giving shepherd. You have not withheld anything from us, but emptied yourself full upon the cross that we might be saved. Move our hearts to such devotion and teach us such generosity that we may bring to you the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart and serve our neighbor in need with the resources you have supplied to us so abundantly. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, okay. Great and good shepherd, we pray that you would hear your sheep and answer our prayers with mercy. Granting us those things profitable for us and for our salvation, and keeping from us all things harmful. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, 
but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance would be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with you.